says, I'll stick closer to you than any brother. said, I'll be with you, even unto the very end. I'm glad Jesus will stick by us. It's up to us to stay close to him and walk with him. Amen. I'll stand with you right beside me. I'll walk as you make the way. Yes, I will. I'll live. As you put the beat in my heart, I'll hold your unchanging hand. I'll stand with you right Walk and live my life for you. 
saved this morning. Jesus has washed your sins away. We serve a mighty God who's able to save, redeem, heal, set the captive free. Hallelujah. We worship you today, Jesus. We worship you today.
I see a lot of faces and I know a lot of things because I spend a lot of time counseling with people around here and I know there are many mountains um, that we encounter. You know, mountains from financial issues, mountains uh, from loved ones who need Jesus, mountains uh, from, from looking for a job and, and trying to find employment, all kinds of mountains that we experience. But I know that God is able. And uh, you know, I know the one thing I kept getting this morning is that as I was standing in you know, you think about, well, Lord, what is it you want me to say this morning? What is it that you want me to pray? Um, you know, leave behind any of your preconceived ideas of what you know about church. You know, I don't want you to have just a, an encounter, and I don't think past, that's pastor's heart either, just another uh, day at church. You know, let this be a life-changing morning for you. You know, allow God, give him right of way um, today in your life, and let him do something within you. He's able and he wants to and he loves you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for we thank you for salvation and we thank you we thank you for how you are mighty to save, Lord, and how it's, it's your heart to, to draw us in, Father, and I just pray that, that you would meet the needs of even these who are around the altar today, Lord. I don't know what it is that they're bringing to you, Father, but that's not important because you know. And Lord, I praise you that you've, I believe you've already sent help to them, Father. I believe that you're already meeting the need. You're, you're the God of now. You're ever-present help in our time of need. And Lord, I just pray that you'll be with this time, be with this service, Father. Be with pastors. He brings the message you laid on his heart today. It's what we need to hear, Lord. It's what we need to, to receive from you. And Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for what's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If the ushers would get in place at this time, we'll take our morning offering. Continue our worship. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, time and this ability that you've given us even to give, Lord. And I just pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver, Father, and use it to the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. August 25th. I am excited about this event. It's a youth night of worship. August 25th, right here at Kingsway. It'll be at 6 o'clock. It's a Saturday night at 6 o'clock, August 25th. We're going to have a great time. Our youth will be leading in worship. We have invited teens from all over this area and youth groups from this area. It's going to be a great night for your teenagers, so make sure, parents, to get your teenagers out here on August 25th at 6 o'clock for our youth night of worship. The vision that God has given Pastor Troy for this church is that we would be connected to God and connected to each other. And we have a couple of opportunities for you to get connected here at Kingsway Fellowship. First of all, tonight is membership class at six o'clock. If you haven't yet become a member here, I want you to come be part of this membership class and come into covenant with this body to change the world for Jesus. And then next Sunday at 4.30, we have our connection meeting where Pastor Troy will share the heart of God for this ministry and his heart and what, what God is doing. And we want to hear a little bit from you too. So make sure and come out next Sunday in the youth building for our connection meeting at 430. As you know, we have the Life Change television broadcast and it's exciting to see how God is using our television program to change people's lives. But we have some changes coming up to our Life Change program that we wanted to tell you about this morning. Fox 19 contacted us this week and informed us that their news program will be taking over our time slot on Sunday mornings. But they are going to give us the 11 o'clock time slot 
on Fox 19 every Sunday morning, which will follow the national news uh, Fox News broadcast. So in order to do this, it's going to be more money. And uh, so we are going to have to let go of our national program on CTN in order to stay on in the Cincinnati area. We shopped around at some other stations. There are no time slots available on Sundays unless we go to like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. We don't feel like that's uh, something we want to do. So we want to stay on and make a presence known here in the Cincinnati area. So beginning next Sunday, our Life Change Television broadcast will be airing on Fox 19 at 11 a.m beginning next Sunday. So make sure you help us get the word out. Uh, we're going to be telling that on Facebook and other places. So help us share our page on, on, on Facebook. Get the word out that beginning next Sunday, August 19th, Fox 19 Life Change Program at 11 a.m.
want you to turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Would you stand please in reverence of God's word for a brief moment of prayer. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I want you to see that. The Apostle Paul, he exhorts us, he commands us that we're to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now I want you to flip back in your Bible to Luke chapter 15. And I want to deal with a story found in Luke 15 today. I'm not going to read it. What I want to ask you to do is this week sometime, maybe tonight even, before the day is over, could you, on your own time, read the story of the prodigal son found in Luke chapter 15. It's going to start at verse 11 and go through the end of the chapter. It's a great story of the Bible, and I want you to read that. I'm going to deal with it today in regards to what Paul told us to do, and that was to cleanse ourselves. Now, the title of the message today is simply this, The Fatted Calf. The fatted calf. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for your word. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's going to communicate your word to our hearts today. And I want you to know, God, my mind, my heart, my spirit is receptive. You can do in me whatever you want to do. You can take out of me whatever you want to take out. And I pray that each person will be the same. That their heart, mind, body, spirit will be open and available to you today. That you can put anything in you want to put in and take anything out you want to take out. And I pray that you'll do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the story of the prodigal son, the best thing that father had to offer was the fatted calf. I mean, it was the best on the farm. The best the father had. You understand in that story, the father is a picture of God. And do you realize this morning that God has great blessing, great things in mind for you and your life? He has the best. And so often we live our lives less than. We live our lives and not experience what God intended for our life, what God wanted for our life. And how sorry and how sad would it be for someone to live and never have the best that Father, our God, has to offer. Now you say, what keeps us from experiencing God's best in our life? I believe the answer is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Where Paul told us that we're to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. I believe the thing that keeps us from experiencing God's best in our life is sin. Sin. And I want to deal with that. Sins of the flesh, sins of the spirit. There is no story in the Bible that illustrates this better than the story of the prodigal son. Now, let me tell you the story. It's found in Luke chapter 15, and a man had two sons. The younger of the sons went to his father and said, Dad, I want my inheritance. I want everything. I want it now. I don't want to wait on nothing. I want it now. Sounds like us, doesn't it? But he said, I want my inheritance. Everything coming to me, give it to me. And the father did what he asked. He gave his inheritance. And you remember the Bible says that this young man took his inheritance and went to a far country and there spent all of his money on riotous living. Now, I don't know if you know what the word riotous means, but I think in the context of the story, it's apparent what it means. Riotous living means he spent his money appeasing and satisfying sins of the flesh. I mean, he did it all. 
When he rolled into town, here's this young man who's got money. He's wealthy. He started throwing parties right off the bat. I mean, big kegs in his pad. I wanted to say pad because I thought it sounded young and cool. But big kegs in his pad. He has all the, all the trimmings of a party. I mean, the drugs and the, the alcohol. And not to mention the girls. Were there ever the girls? I mean, his apartment was full every night. He was doing everything. And having a blast, which, by the way, the Bible tells us that sin is fun, but only for a season. Listen to me. You can have a lot of fun. Listen, if sin wasn't fun, we wouldn't be tempted to do it. Sin is fun, but it only lasts for a little while. When his money ran out, there went the parties. And when his money ran out, there went his friends, even the long-lost cousins. They were all gone. He couldn't find a friend in the world. No more parties. All the girlfriends, they were gone. I mean, he was standing there alone. And the Word of God tells us that this boy was in want. I promise you, sin will always leave you in want. It never satisfies. You can't get enough. The more you get, the more you want, the more you want, the more you want to get. And it just keeps happening and happening and happening. And it's worse. And it graduates. And it gets worse and worse and worse until you cannot, it does not satisfy. And this boy was not satisfied. And now he was even hungry physically. He was starving. What am I going to do? And he finds a pig farmer. Now, I had a couple pigs here a few weeks ago. And uh, we took them to the fair, and they're sold, and they're gone. And I promise you, if you ever kick me out and no one lets me preach, and I have to figure out how I'm going to make a living other than this, I promise you on the authority of God's Word in my own name, I will never be a pig farmer. <laughs> my Word, they're horrible beasts to deal with. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to be desperate to be a pig farmer. Well, this boy was desperate. So he goes to this guy and says, I'm starving. You've got to help me. You, you, I, I'm, you've got to help me. The guy says, I don't want to have any work for you. I ain't got no job. They're all taken. He says, please, you can't. You've got to do something. And so the guy says, I'll tell you what. You can feed the hogs. And once they're finished eating, this is in your Bible. Once they're finished eating, what they don't want, their leftovers, their slop, what they don't eat, you can have. So here's this boy who's got a wealthy family. He spent all this money on riders. Here's this boy laying in the pig pen, slopping around with them. And the Bible says he would chew on the husk that the pigs didn't want. If that is not a picture of where sin will leave you. You're having fun. Look, look at me. You're having fun right now. But I promise you, sin will always take you farther than you want to go and cost you more than you want to pay. It'll leave you there. And that's what happened with this young man. He's chewing on husk that pigs don't want. And he comes to himself. What am I doing here? Why did I ever end up in this mess? He said, I'm going to repent. I know what I'll do. I'm going to get up out of this pig pen and I'm going to go home to my father. After all, the servants there have bread enough to spare. I mean, they eat and they're full and have leftovers and eat some more. I mean, they are living great. And here I am in this pig pen. I'm going to go home and I'm going to say, Dad, I've sinned greatly against you and the family and against God. And I've done all these horrible things. I'm not worthy to be your son. But if you'll just make me a hired servant, please take me back. And he, he rehearsed this speech. And the Bible says, now let me show you the heart of the father. The Bible says, the boy rounded the mountain. And there he is on the hillside. And suddenly the father, who must have been looking for him every evening, looks out on the hillside and he sees his younger son who had been gone. And the word of God says, and I love this, that the father ran to him. Look at me, look at me. Listen to me. I promise you, if you take one step toward God, God will run to you. He loves you. 
I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what pig pen you've been wallowing in. God will run to you. Don't you appreciate him? And here's what he did. The boy starts his speech and he ignored what the boy had to say. He looks at the servant. And he tells them to do a few things. He says, get, get a pair of shoes, get the ring, which signifies sonship. And I don't have time to preach those. I want to deal with one. He said, get my best robe. That's a thought. Get my best robe and bring it to me. Now, he, they like us. They had probably different outfits for different occasions. You had the outfit that you work in and the clothes that you work in. They had the clothes that they, you know, went to the, the chariot uh, races in. I mean... <laughs> What, I don't know what they did back then. <laughs> this is my robe. I wear the chariot races, <laughs> the demolition chariot. I mean, I don't, I don't know what they, you know, they had, they had to go to the fair clothes. I mean, they had that stuff. And then they had the, the fine dining robes, the best. He said, bring my best robe here. You know why he did that? He said, I'm going to wrap it around my boy. I want to show you the heart of God the Father. The heart of the Father was this. Here's my boy in all of his shame. He's still got the stench of a pig pen, the mud and the manure on his body. Here he is. He's lived a hellish lifestyle. Slept with harlots, drunkenness. I mean, he's done it all. This boy has been at the bottom. But he said, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to parade him in front of the neighbors right. and the servants right. and my right. his mother. What is it about humans? We, we want to parade people. Look, this is what happens when you go against God. <laughs> we want to make an example of them. This is how it will go. No, the father said, bring me my best robe. And he put it around him. And when he brought him into the house, the neighbors, the servants, his his mother, no one ever saw how low he got, how rotten he was, how filthy he was. No one ever saw. All they saw was the Father's robe. And I don't know about you, I'm thankful that when I came to God, He didn't make an example of me. He didn't show people how awful I had been, how low I had been, how dirty, how filthy. But He robed me in the righteousness of Christ and washed me in the blood of His Son. Hallelujah. Pardon me while I get excited a minute. Bless his holy name. I'm so glad that God covered me in my shame and in my sin. Glory to God. And even though I've done horrible things, even though I've done embarrassing things, and even though I've sinned greatly, one day when I stand before God, all oh, the sins that's against my charge, Jesus Christ will stand up and put his robe around me and say, Dad, he's mine. He's mine. I've got him covered. And they are covered by the blood. They are covered by the blood. Praise God. My sins are covered by the blood. That's the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is to cover our shame. Not expose it. But the whole time that boy was living that lifestyle, he never had anything the father had to offer, especially the fatted calf. But the father did one last thing. He looked at the servant and said, go get the fatted calf and kill it. He said, we're going to have ourselves a party. I want you to call the neighbors in. I want you to call all the servants in. I want you to call everyone that we know, get on the phone, get on Facebook. I want you to post it. We've killed the fatted calf. We're going to have ourselves a time. Why? Because the boy, my son, he was lost, but now he's found. He was, he, he was dead, but now he's alive. <laughs> We're going to have a party. I want to tell you something, church. Anytime anybody comes to Jesus... Anytime anybody gets saved and they come out of sin and they're washed in Jesus' blood, we ought to throw a party. Hey, anytime someone leaves God and leaves the church and comes home, we ought to throw a party. The streamers ought to be flying. We ought to have little things in their mouth with it. You know what I'm talking about? 
I mean, with lampshades on the head, we ought to get on the chairs and dance. We ought to celebrate and praise God and thank God and worship God and have a party every time somebody comes to this altar. Every time somebody comes home, bless the Lord, we ought to have a party. You know what would be great? If Claremont County got to know this church as the party church. Every time somebody gets somewhere, but they throw a party. Come on, get your hats on. Huh? Yeah. Kill the fatted calf. The older brother, though. The older brother came in from the field. And said, what's all this noise, music, and they're dancing, what, what's going on? And one of the servants said, haven't you heard? What do you mean, haven't heard? Haven't you heard? Your younger brother, you know, the one that took off, he's home. He come home, and we're having a party. It's amazing. And your dad killed the fatted calf, and that didn't sit well. Something got in his crawl. No, no, let me restate that. Something didn't get in his crawl. What was in his crawl was revealed. The Bible says he got angry. He was bitter. Oh, ain't that, ain't that just something? He goes around running with harlots, spending our money, wasting dad's hard-earned money. Huh? Shows up and dad kills the fighting calf. Ain't, well, I ain't, I ain't never done anything like that for me. Does that sound familiar to you? Amen. Amen. Ain't that just something? And he got angry and bitter. And the father comes out. Look at him. The father comes out and says, so what's the problem? He said, I'll tell you the problem. He said, I, I, didn't, I didn't run around with harlots. It's right in the Bible. And he said, I didn't have these drunken parties, and, and I didn't waste inheritance, and I didn't do all these things. I've been here all along, and you never killed the fatted calf for me. Now listen, the dad looks at him and says, son, all that I have is yours. You've been here, all that I have is yours. In other words, it's always been yours, that fatted calf. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That boy's heart, that boy's heart kept him from the best that the daddy had. His heart. And he could stand there and say that he didn't sleep with harlots, and he didn't waste money, and he didn't do all that. He didn't do that. But there's something else he'd have to say. He didn't ever get the best the father had. And here's the reality. The reality is there are people who come to church every single Sunday. Listen, they come every single Sunday. They don't miss church. They're right in there. Bless God. They're a part of this thing. They come every but because of the condition of their heart, they never get the best God had for their life. They never eat the fatted calf. And they sit around and in their bitter and critical ways blame everybody else. My life would be better if he hadn't done that, if she hadn't done that. My situation would be better if they hadn't. Mom and dad, grandma or grandpa, high school teacher, basketball coach, whoever it was that wronged you. My husband, my wife, that church, that preacher, this person, that one, on and on and on it goes. That's why I'm angry. That's why I'm bitter. Now listen to me. Listen to me. That younger brother, when he came home, did not cause his older brother to have anger. He only revealed that the older brother had it all along. I'm preaching something right now. 
You need to listen to me. I got something to tell you. He, nobody can cause you to have bitterness. But what they do will reveal that, will reveal that your heart was already bitter. Nobody can cause you to have anger. But what they do to you will, will reveal that you had anger in your heart. That's why the Bible says be angry and sin not. There's a difference, you see. Sins of the Spirit, the condition of our heart, will cause us. Let me just talk about a few of them. Envy, jealousy, pride. Selfishness, critical spirit, sharp tongue. You want to be careful hanging out with people with a sharp, critical tongue. Because it won't be very long until that tongue's talking about you. I'm preaching better than you're amen in today. Self pity. Poor little old me. I just never get it anyway. You ever throw a pity party? I've thrown some pity parties. I couldn't get anyone to attend. <laughs> Nobody would come. Who wants to go to a pity party? Unforgiveness, strife, anger, judging. See, the older brother wanted the father to let the boy have it. The older brother wanted everybody to see the younger brother get it. Huh? Come on. The older brother would have been happy had the father not put the robe on him and, and he called her for the older brother, come and help me do this. We're going to show everybody what happens when you go against daddy. We're going to make him the example. Don't ever go against the father. Don't ever go against daddy. Here's what happened. I want to tell you that older brother, would have, it would have made his night to parade that boy in all his stench and shame and sin before the servants and the neighbors. And I didn't do this. I didn't do this. Look, look, look what he did. Not me. Huh? How dare he act like that? How dare he do that? This is what happens. And that's the nature that we have. There's something about us. I want to ask you a question. What is it about us? That we want anybody to be shaved. What is it in your heart that would want anybody? We even make these statements. Well, well their days are coming, bless God. They're going to come back around and get them. They're going to they're gonna pay for what they did. They'll answer to God. One day the wrath of God's going to get them, I'll tell you. What is it about anything? Why, why would there be anything in our heart that we would want anybody Anybody to fall under God's wrath. You have any idea what you're saying? You have any idea what you're doing? Their day's coming. They're going to get what's coming to them. It's this thing about us. We want people to be judged. We want people to get what's coming to them. To answer. That was the older brother. His heart, man, he was, he was bitter. He was angry. How dare you come back and how dare you. Sin of the spirit. A little root of bitterness inside that just eats at you. And what's interesting is that the condition of his heart caused him to always have a skewed vision of his father. Because the dad said, listen, this has been yours all along. You could have had the fatted calf any time you wanted. It's always been yours. But because of the condition of his heart, he misunderstood even the heart of his own father. He viewed his father through his own, man, I'm preaching good now. Do you realize that we, we, we view God through the lens of our own heart? We view God through the lens of our own heart. And we think we can't have what's best. He didn't think the fatted calf was his. And it was all along. 
He missed it. And again, he could say, I didn't do this, and I didn't do that, and I didn't go here, and I didn't spend the money, but he also never had the best that Father had. Now listen to me. You might brag this morning about what you've not done last night when it comes to the sins of the flesh. But let me ask you a question. Are you living the best place God has for you? Are you living at the best place? See, what's interesting about this story is one left and came back in to the best that God or the Father had. One stayed and never went in. One left and came back to the Father. One stayed and never think about it. The older brother was this close to everything Father had and missed it. Can you imagine living your life that close to God and miss it? Miss the best that God had for you. Miss his blessing. Miss his grace. Miss his favor. Miss it all. Miss his perfect will for your life. Miss the intent of what, that he had when he created you to begin with, to go to church every Sunday. And because of the bitterness and the anger and the condition of your heart and the unforgiveness and the little thing that's inside that nobody knows about, just you. And you keep it masked and you keep it covered. But every now and then, it, and you miss out. And when everybody else is eating the fatted calf and everybody else is partying and everybody else is enjoying what God has for them, you miss it. And you're plagued. You're plagued with something because of it. A lot of sickness. A lot of things in our body, mind, emotion. A lot of it has to do with that. Man, this is so true. A lot of emotional sickness has a lot to do with not letting go of it. That's the truth. And you seem like you can never have a good relationship and you can never get anywhere and you can never. And it's because the condition of your heart, it won't let you. Your heart won't let you. Am I saying this well enough for you? Do you get what I'm saying? And you miss the fatted calf, the best that God had. Because you're critical. And you're angry. You're bitter. Sometimes even at God. Twenty years ago, I was preaching in a revival. I gave the altar call. An elderly lady came to the altar. They had wooden altars. Now, I mean, she laid across that altar, and she cried, and she wept, and she hit her hand on the altar, and she, she just couldn't get anywhere. And I went down, and she had been in that church for 50 years, and I went down, and I was preaching this revival service. I was in my early 20s, just a kid preacher. And I went down, and I, I took her, her face in my hands, and I wiped the tears back, and I said, what is it, Mother? Wasn't my mom. She was just a mother in that church. She had been around forever, and I've known her for years. And I said, what is it, mother? And she said, five years ago, someone in a fit of rage murdered my boy, my son. In cold blood, he killed him. She said, I've been angry at that man. I've been angry at God for letting it happen. I've just been angry inside. I've been bitter. I've been upset. And on and on it went. She said, and for five years I come to church, but I don't sense God. I sing the songs, but I don't feel God. I read my Bible every day because religiously that's what I've always done. She said, but I don't get anything from it. She said, I try to do things in the church and it goes nowhere. She said, I, 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 haven't, I haven't sensed the, the presence of God and the best for my life. I, in, in over five years I've got nowhere. She said, I'm just eating husk. I'm just surviving here. I'm still going to church, but I don't have it. I don't have it. I need, I need help. I need God to help me. And she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And the next night, she came back. She 
She walked up front, and I walked down there and put my arm around her, and she was just a cry. I mean, just just hot, scalding tears coursing down her cheeks, and her hands were in air. She was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, what is it, Mama? She said, this morning I got up. And I went over just across town where that prison is, where that guy is. I went over. And I went in. And I said, I need to see so-and-so. And they said, we can't do that. She said, you need to arrange it. He killed my boy. And I need to talk to him. And they made the arrangement. And they brought him into a room and brought her in with guards. And there sat that hardened criminal on the other side of the table. And she reached across that table and grabbed his hands. And the tears off her cheeks and she said look at me and he did she said you know you killed my boy she said but I want you to know that I forgive you and she said she said I want you to know she said I want you to know that God loves you and Jesus Christ died to save you and forgive you of your sin even the sin of killing my son and she said if I can ever help you to get to God if you ever want to come to Jesus, you call me and I'll run back over here to this prison and I'll, I'll pray with you and I'll lead you to Jesus. He didn't get saved then. But she stood there that Friday night in that church and she started jumping up and down and waving her arms. She said, I haven't felt this way in years. She said, God is so close and the liberty I have in my heart and the joy that fills my soul. She said, I can't even explain it. I don't even know how to explain it. It's been years since I felt this way. Listen to me. The thing that keeps you from the best God has for you is sin. Sin of the flesh, Will. If you want to keep living in sins of the flesh, doing what appeases you and makes you feel good to your flesh, I want to tell you, it'll catch up with you. It'll catch up with you. And you'll never experience God's life. But also, just as wrong and just as damning are sins of the Spirit inside. And if you want to hold on to that, anger or unforgiveness or bitterness, or I could name a thousand things, you want to hold on to that? You can come to church every Sunday and never have the fatted calf. Never have what God intended for you to have. Or the heart of the father was, I'll cover my son who committed these shameful acts and sins. And then the other the older son, please just come in. The fatted calf is already yours. Just command the heart of the Father is it doesn't matter what the condition of your life is, God loves you and He wants to redeem you. Do you hear me? So this morning I ask you to repent of sins of the flesh, sin of the spirit, whatever it may be, and enjoy the fatted calf, the best that God has for you. Stand with me, please. Here's what I want to do. Elder Todd's going to come and sing. This is a little different. It's been a different kind of service today. But I know in my heart of hearts I've done exactly what God told me to do. Now I'm going to ask you to mind God and do what God tells you to do. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I need to repent. I need to come forward. I need to come and kneel at this altar and ask God to forgive me. Maybe it's sin of the flesh. If it is, I want you to know we love you and God loves you. And I don't care what it is. You don't need to be ashamed. We'll love you and God will. And if it's sin of the Spirit, I don't care what kind of anger or hostility or unforgiveness or anything else you've harbored in your heart or bitterness, I don't care what it is. I want you to know God loves you and He'll take it out in an instant if you'll repent. So I ask you to come and let God cleanse you today. If you need cleansing, I ask you to come. Sing, please. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely come on, just come to Jesus. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Surrender. 
gotta let you go but I want you to look at me please everybody please I want to tell you something real important here. I know this hasn't been entertaining preaching we've not you know hung from the ceiling or anything but I want you to listen to this please listen if there's something in your heart that hinders in any way shape or form your relationship with God then that very thing hinders your relationship with your husband your wife your children boss, the pastor, anybody. If there's anything in your heart that hinders your relationship with God, then it's going to harm all your other relationships. They'll not be what they could be. They'll not be what they should be. They'll not be what you need, to, need it to be. And the whole time you're blaming everybody else, it's really And you think if I could just get another one. That was a lady in the Bible. She thought if I could just get another husband, then I'll be happy. And she had five of them and was living with one. And it didn't work because the problem was in her heart. Am I making sense to you? Amen. You think if I could just go to another church, you can go to that church. And, I'm, and you know what? The problems will be the same because it's in your heart. If I can just... Am I making any sense to you? If your heart is not where it needs to be with God, it will have a profound effect on everything around you. Amen. And you'll not eat the fatted calf. Sing again. Why don't you come and repent today? Why don't you come and say, God, cleanse me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Lord. some of you saints together in around these and pray and I'm going to dismiss the rest of you but can I get a few of my prayer warriors if you've been if you know God and you know word of prayer I want you to come please and help us pray Father I thank you and praise you for the faithfulness of your spirit to deal with hearts I thank you for your word and I pray God that you embed it deep within us and change us forever because of it go from this place. I pray that your spirit and blessing would go with us. Ask God that your face would be smiling upon each one. This week, we look to you and we trust you. You're the author and finisher of our faith. You're the beginning and ending of all things. So our trust is in you. Thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Princess. Don't forget, if you're visiting with us, to stop by Claire at Connection Corner. We'd love to visit with you for just a moment. God bless you.